everybody, I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Are you ready for part two with the incredible Mark Elliott? Yes, I am, and yes, they are, and let's Here go there go. now. So I have a question for you, it, it, while we're on this little topic here. Uh, and maybe this is your perspective, but what do you think it is about the voiceover business that attracts so many people to want to be a part of it? Now more than ever. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't know anything about the voiceover business uh, before I got into it. I mean, I knew, of course, that it was done. I had done political ads when I was working at the radio station yeah. in Des Moines. You know, I had, I had done some commercials here and there. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize that you could actually earn a living mm -hmm. at it. I didn't realize that there was, that there was an opportunity to earn some sub substantial money. Uh, and I, I, finding out, I think, as people have now, I think the word has gotten out. I think Don's, I think the word yeah. has gotten out. <laughs> Don's popularity, Don yeah. LaFontaine's yeah. popularity, yeah. and him showing up on in the commercials and in the mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you know on on all of the television shows, the Entertainment Tonight, and all that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Uh, I think all of a sudden people are going, "Oh, what is that? Maybe yeah. I could do that." And the truth is. A lot of people can do it. It doesn't require, as we said before, years of study. And, and a lot of people who just have an understanding of how to speak and how to communicate. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I, I get a little concerned these days. I'm going to sound like a real old fuddy-duddy here. But I get a little concerned with everybody, in, you know, tweeting and, and texting and everything, mm -hmm. that that whole ability to communicate is right. being kind of stifled for yeah. the moment mm -hmm. to sit face to face and 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 have a conversation with mm -hmm. somebody I was at a restaurant the other night and there were six people at a at a table and they were not talking to they each other all, they all yeah. had their phones they all had their phones and I know all, conversations you know, are now 140 characters it's like exactly yeah that's yeah. right and 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 that 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 worries me a little mm -hmm. bit but but as I was saying this is not a job that requires it's not like an athlete you know it's not like <clears throat> excuse me a doctor or somebody who requires years and years of, of getting better. A lot of people just do it sort of intuitively. Yeah. It's, it's kind of an instinct. I've seen a lot of people get into voiceover who had no background at all. Yeah. Radio is a great background because it, it, it gave you a sense of time. Mm -hmm. you, 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 if you had seven seconds at the beginning of a song to talk it up, you learned to, to know what seven seconds was. Yeah. Uh, and, and so that that aspect of being in radio was very helpful. On the other hand, when I was first getting into the business, people would listen to me who knew that I was on the, on the air, and they would say, you sound like a disc jockey. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, you know, I know, I, I know that's what you think of me as, but that's not how I sound. And I really didn't. The first agent that I approached, and this guy, this guy was just amazing, the first agent amazing that I approached. Amazing good or amazing bad? Amazing good. Okay. He took me He <laughs> took me into their announce booth. He said he had just gone to work at this agency. And he said, I just got here. I don't know what I've got, what I don't have. But he said, I'd be curious to know what you what you would bring to me. Mm -hmm. So we went into a, a, to their announce booth. And he gave me a piece of copy for a bank. And uh, I read it. And he said, that was nice. He said, um, you've got good pipes. But don't beat me over the head with them. <laughs> right, right, right. And so he said, next time, I want you to, to read it just as though the words are trickling out of your mouth and falling off your chin. Mm. You know, don't give me all the projection. Don't give me all the... the, right. the Enunciation. You know. Exactly. Yeah. You know, just loosen it up, make it very conversational. And I did it a second time. And he said, if I were casting, you'd get the job. Wow. He said, and so that was something that, that really was very helpful to me. And you asked mm -hmm. about, you know, where that comes from, that, that, that sound. It was mostly him. Mm. It was mostly wow. that moment. Yeah. Again, that, that yeah. little yeah. cartoon light bulb. Yeah. And yeah. you go, got it. Well, okay. clearly you're versatile and flexible and directable. You know, you're not, well, maybe your career had a certain style that it, a lane it stayed in. You're obviously not a one-trick pony, so... You know, you, you no, that's true. But I, but I think I think I do things some things better than others. Sure. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, I I think that the, that the comedy read will always be falling off a log for me, and it will mm -hmm. always be the thing that I'm most comfortable doing. Yeah. Always. Right. Uh, but I do kind of enjoy every once in a while doing something that is a little. I think the the the, the trailer that I did that I am the most proud of uh, was Chariots of Fire. 
Mm. I did mm -hmm. the I did the trailer for Chariots of Fire. It, totally out of character. Totally out of character for me. The, the 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 promo that I did that I think I am most proud of was for the last episode of Mash, mm. uh, oh. which was yeah, which was kind of a you know heart tugging but still comedic mm -hmm. sort of read, mm -hmm. and and that I loved. I I, I love the opportunity. And you know, Stacy, just to do something to, 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 that, that that people don't know you for. That yeah. people that yeah. they just don't automatically assume. Well, yeah, you yeah. can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely. Yeah. Just make them make them go. Oh wow. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Who's this? Yeah. 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 Um, do you still do you still enjoy auditioning, or do you still want to audition? I or? do audition a lot. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. They, they they send me an audition. I probably audition every three or four days okay. uh, for something. Uh, I don't get a lot of it, and I think is it, it mainly like like promo stuff? Or, no. Or no commercial, commercial. stuff. Commercial primarily stuff. commercial okay. stuff. And I, I think that one of the things that I'm doing that is wrong is, as I said, I've got I've got equipment at home to to, to record. It's not it's not air quality. We're not going to talk about no. it equipment because we no. don't want to put out uh, bad information out there into the waves. But just know, Mark, yeah, we're doing doing an, we're doing a home studio intervention with yeah. Mark. Right after we're done here, we're going to be doing a home so, studio intervention. So that information is classified. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that the problem is, A, that maybe the quality is not that good, and mm. B, I don't have anybody to give me feedback. There's nobody who, yeah. say, who, who, who can tell me, have you ever thought about doing it this way? Could mm -hmm. we try it this way? Because I don't go into the agent's office very often. I, you know, it's, it's a long haul. It's difficult, yeah. it's difficult to get away and get in there. Of course. So, so uh, I, I do most of it from home. I, I think now that we're talking about that, I think, I think maybe I will <laughs> See, start See, you're doing having it. an epiphany, Mark. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Does it show? Yeah. <laughs> that light bulb is coming up. Now, again. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. On our next uh, visit with uh, Mark Elliott, <laughs> we're going to talk about the difference before and after. Uh, well, Chuck, my whole life changed. Now I'm the voice of Disney again. And, and no, every car. And every yeah. car. Yeah. Uh, that's really, really funny, man. No, the sound quality is very important. It, it does make it, a difference. It, yeah. it is. And you know what? Here's what I tell people. I produce demos for, you know, people from all over the world. Right. And and, and I coach them on, on taking their career from, you know, where they are and want to be. Um, and I do that because I, I love helping people and I want them to get the best out of their right. efforts and out of their money and all that stuff. But the one thing that, and I've seen this, not it's, it's not just like me talking about it, but I've actually seen it happen before my eyes a million times. So I'm such a hard believer, a true believer, strong believer in that if you have a guy let's they're casting a job for BMW whatever um, and they 50 people audition for it they dwindle it down to three guys from a skill perspective the sound the attitude and everything they're all three of them are equally perfect for the job who does the brain choose the one, the one that sounds the best, sounds the best. Yeah. yeah and so I tell people all the time when you don't have adequate equipment, and it doesn't have to be like what I have, okay, but something that sounds broadcast quality at right. least, you are cheating yourself out of so many jobs. That's true. You know what I mean? And Yeah, and and I mean, the, the, the truth of the matter is, you can put in your home now, as most people are doing. Oh, gosh. You yes. can put something in there for, you know, five, six grand, you that can, is, that you're going to earn it back in a week based yeah, on the jobs. Yeah, you can put something in there for, for 1,500. <laughs> yeah? For, yeah. For 600. Mark, we're going to get you taken care <laughs> yeah, of. I, think I can't make time, a huh? world of difference. <laughs> My Disney paisan over there, we got to <laughs> look paisan, out for you. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you mentioned um, earlier Don LaFontaine. Yes. There is a fantastic video that you guys did, The Five Guys in a Limo. Yeah. That was fun. That was um, really fun. So good. And we are going to take a quick peek at Mark in that right now. Meet Mark Elliott, the cherished voice of the most beloved animated classics of our time. Featuring all your favorite Disney characters, Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, Timon, Pumbaa, Pocahontas, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Hercules, Beauty and the Beast, Winnie the Pooh, Bumper, Dot, Sleepy, Sneezy, and the ever-delightful Dopey. With special songs by the Academy Award-winning team that brought you Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin. How did that all come together? It is just... 
just it's genius. It's genius. <laughs> it was it, actually that was truly a fun day. That yeah. was that was really an amazing day. Uh, I don't know how I got involved in that. I know that the aspect ratio people, Bob Israel and and the people at aspect yeah. ratio, mm -hmm. uh, they said, "Would you like to do this?" Mm -hmm. And I didn't really understand what it was they were talking about. Right. And <laughs> even at the end of the day, I didn't know for sure what, what we had done. Yeah. What yeah. just happened here? Yeah. I love yeah. it. You get in there and you're just like Bambi snowing. You're just like, oh my gosh. And, you're... And, and everybody else is in their tuxes, and I'm yeah. in my little, I'm in my little, you know, pale sweater. yellow sweater. You look like you just left yeah. the tennis court or something. Yeah. yeah. It was or the so golf good. course. <laughs> it was. It so was a hoot. That was. That was really fun. That was really clever. Yeah. That was a great day. Yeah. Very clever. Yeah, and it was it was uh, obviously set up to introduce the award show, mm -hmm. and and we then went to the award show and went up on stage and and uh, made our personal appearance. Still, me in my yellow sweater, yeah. and everybody yes. else in their tux. Uh, that was that was really fun. Don was Don was a great guy. Don was such a my first impression of Don, and I must be honest here, and I've told other people this, this is not news. Uh, I, I was not fond of Don. Uh, mm -hmm. First time I, I met Don, I worked for him. Uh, he was working at Paramount. Mm -hmm. And they. Uh, I think the movie was All the Right Moves. And on a Saturday, we went into Kaleidoscope Studios and uh, did a trailer for All the Right Moves. And Don came in, and Don was going through, I don't know whether it was a midlife crisis or what it was at the time, but Don came in with his shirt unbuttoned down to here. <laughs> And with with two very very attractive very tall blondes with him, and they rubbed his shoulders while he's directing me. No, they me. did not. They did. And I'm across. The, I'm in the. I'm behind the glass, looking at him, going, "I hate you." <laughs> you are everything I hate. But the truth of the matter is he was wonderful at giving me direction. He knew yeah. exactly how to how to mm -hmm. tell me how to do it because he could do it. Right. You know, so he could he could give voice to, which is frequently a problem yeah. with people who are not are not able to, to tell you exactly what they're looking for or mm -hmm. listening for. Mm -hmm. And and they kind of they say, Yeah, just make it warmer. That's right. that's the word that makes me crazy. It's like, what do you mean? Yeah. You know? yeah. Because that that means something different to everybody. Everybody. But anyway, so, so the, then the first time that I met Don after he got into voiceover, uh, he was actually, he had come over to CBS and he was going to do some of the CBS promos. Mm -hmm. uh, this was before Chuck came over. And Don, uh, Don, I, I showed up for my, my session one day and Don was running late and uh, he was doing a trailer for uh, uh, Magnum. And uh, so they they were saying, okay, Don, you know this is Magnum, it's detective, you know, but kind of lighthearted. It's it's not a it's not a real serious knife at the jugular kind mm. of read. And and uh, so Don says, and I remember this very well because I heard him do it so many times that day. He said, you know, uh, Thursday on Magnum, Magnum pursues a Magnum pursues a killer onto a carnival midway and winds up all wet. <laughs> and at that point, they throw a ball and, and dunk him in the yeah, yeah dunk him yeah, in. Yeah, okay, yeah. and they said, okay, uh, good. <laughs> Don, uh, you know, could we have it maybe just a little bit lighter? It's, as you can see, it's kind of a funny scene. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. Magnum pursues a killer onto a carnival midway and winds up all wet. And he went, even lighter, even lighter. Could you do it even lighter, you know? And he's just right, yeah. Magnum pursues. And I'm sitting back there going, I could do it. I could do that. Oh. I could do that. So we got off on kind of a on kind of a bad footing. Yeah, but yeah. man, I will tell you, and this is my favorite Don LaFontaine story, and I'm boring you to tears with this stuff. No, no you're not at all. But, you can't but at Don Don and I met at, at uh, uh, New Wave Studios one time and it was right before Christmas. And Don said to me, he, I was just leaving and he was just coming in and he said, Oh, oh, I was hoping I'd see you. He said, uh, you like music, right? I said Dude, it's my drug of choice. And he said, I got something I really want you to hear. He said, I really want you to hear. So he said, I've got just some tags to do. I'll be right out. So I waited for him. We went down, got in his limo. And he said, I want you to hear this. And he put in this CD by a Romanian soprano named Inissa Galante. Mm. And she sang Ave Maria. Mm. And I will tell you, the hair was standing up on my arms. Nobody said a word while this song played. And nobody said a word for about 15 seconds after it was over because I didn't trust myself to speak. I was, it really touched me. And I said, dude, that's 
Not like anything I've ever heard in my life. It was just, just mm. spectacular. He said, I knew you'd like it. I knew you'd like it. And he ejected it from the, from the player and put it in the jewel box and gave it to me and said, Merry mm. Christmas. And I still, I still have that. Wow. And that's, that's cool. you know, that was Don. And that's the Don that most people remember. And, and I mean, he was a very giving man. Yeah. He really mm. gave a lot of himself and his time and his talent. You know, he was he was just a, a a very special guy. And and again, we talk about that that inability to connect sometimes when you first meet somebody. Yeah. It's it's always good. It's worthwhile to see if you can break through that. Yes, because, and you clearly did. Yes, yeah. we did. Yeah, yeah we yeah. became yeah we became very close. Because yeah. you guys, so you learned learn. never judge a book. Right. Never judge exactly. Don LaFontaine by, by his, his shirt by, by his, his bimbos. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, it's true. Uh, you know, that, that was a, that, that's a very good lesson for me. That was, and then you he know, went yeah. on to marry one of the classiest oh, women Nita. in the world, Nita, Nita Whitaker. Nita. She is just so nice. Dynamite. We'll right. talk about a voice. Wow. 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 wow, really? Wow, magical. Yeah. She is. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and his beautiful daughters. Yeah. Yes, the amazing um, family. Mark wants you to ask him another question. He does. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mark. How did you know that? Mark, so, if you, I got ESPN, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> if you weren't a voice actor, what do you think you would have been doing with your life? Uh, probably, uh, probably a teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I, I would like to have. I, I, I like to. I like to talk. I like to. I like to interact with with young with younger people. Mm -hmm. I really, I think that's, I, I, I was reading an article the other day and I thought, man, am I the luckiest guy in the world or what? They had the five keys to living, not necessarily a longer life, but a better life as, mm -hmm. as, as years go by. Sure. And one of them was a good social life, circle of friends, getting out, you know, uh, spending time with people younger than yourself, the younger, the better, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, animals, pets, mm -hmm. uh, 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 music, and laughter. Mm. Okay, and I thought, five for five. Yeah. I, I, am I not the luckiest guy in the world? Yeah. Nice. Five for five. I've got, yeah, I've got all of that in spades in my mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. uh, but mostly the kids. The kids give me great, great pleasure. I've got a goddaughter and, and, and her brother uh, who are both going to college now. Rio is in uh, uh, Regis University in Denver, and mm -hmm. Nico's at uh, University of uh, Indiana in Bloomington. And then I've got these three crazy kids that are the daughters of or the children of my best friend uh, down in Redondo Beach and they are hysterical and they are so funny it's like it's like just every time you're with them the other day Michael who is now geez Michael's 13 uh, when I first met Michael he was one yeah you know? wow. uh, but Michael said to me as we're leaving dinner one night I, I took one last sip of my margarita and put it down on the table and, and Michael said uh, Mark, you know how you'd know if you had too much of that? And I said, no, Michael, how would I know? And he said, you'd hear yourself say, hello, I'm a lovely princess. Who's going to ask me to the ball? <laughs> <laughs> now, tell me this isn't good company. That's you good know? company. That's, That's good company. That's so funny. And, and Ava, the little girl who is now 15, Ava wrote me on my, on my 71st birthday, she wrote me a, she wrote me a, a, a poem. And it said, we hear you're 71 today, to which we say hip, hip, hooray. We think it's just fine that you are not 90, because then you'd only last until May. <laughs> <laughs> love these people. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, love it's hard people. to believe your own hype when you have oh people like that that gosh. keep you I can't grounded. Yeah. I love yeah. it. remember all this yes. stuff, man. I know you're, you. Your memory is sharp. I love that. For somebody that's had all those Irish cream mm, coffee. And margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> not lately. <laughs> yes. I've oh my gosh. Some mojitos. There you <laughs> go. Yeah. The lighter beverage, yeah. So, Mr. Elliot. Yes. Oh. Uh, you uh, earlier you were talking about you know that one of the things that you miss about the industry is that you don't get to interact with you know some of the good people that That's you right. know inside. Yeah. So, through the years, man, what, because the industry has changed so much. Yeah, sure. What has. are some what are what are some things that you miss about it that you like that that, that that have changed, and maybe some things that that maybe you like about the changes or that you think are positive? Well. Don't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. No, no, I think, I mean, obviously, 
the ability to work out of your home. Yes. That technology is one of the best things to happen, even though it does have its darker side. Uh, and, and, and included in that darker side, I think, is the fact that you really are kind of always available yeah. and, mm -hmm. and they know they have access to you. And I think yeah. that the, I think the, the time of the talent becomes less of a consideration and less of something that needs to be considered. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, getting a call, I've, I've had guys tell me they get calls at 10, 30, 11, 12 o'clock at mm -hmm. night. You know, we need, a, we need to pick up a line yeah. from the thing that we did earlier today. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't like that. But on the other hand, I would love not having to drive around town. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. to me, that was always the worst part of my job was driving I, around driving town, driving around town. Yeah. Yeah. getting from mm -hmm. point A to point B uh, in Los Angeles. That's a major task. Yes. That's, Why you didn't know. you carpool with Don <laughs> <laughs> in the limo? <laughs> hey, Don, pick me up on the <laughs> on, uh, on uh, the Gower and corner. Sunset. <laughs> Yeah. But now you now you tell me. Yeah, right. Yeah, see? Yeah. Exactly. You're like, you're thinking, you're like, uh, I could have done I that. I could have had a driver, oh, too. Oh, my goodness gracious. Um, yeah, and, and I think that probably also the the darker side of of the of the technology aspect is, might be also that you don't really get a chance to interact and have somebody else direct you or tell you if you're doing something wrong exactly. or if you should do something different for that exactly. matter. Exactly, mm -hmm. that's right. So that's pretty, that's yeah. not that great. Yeah, and, and when you're doing auditions from home and you have nobody to say, I think you could do it better or, you mm -hmm. know, let's try it one more time a little faster, that sounded yeah. a little mm -hmm. slow. Uh, you don't get that. You don't. You don't stretch yourself at all. You become very complacent with what you've done, and if you if you pronounced all the words correctly, and and you know had a relatively appropriate amount of energy, yeah. then you kind of go, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. And that I think is not good because yeah. it, it. And again, it limits you not just for that moment. But it limits you for future experiences mm -hmm. because, as we've talked, you know, when you have those experiences in a studio and somebody says, hey, have you thought to do it this way? And all of a sudden you go, man, I hadn't. But what a great idea. What a great yeah. idea. And then you remember then that's those right. things. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember I was doing a workshop when I first, uh, when I first started doing voiceover. I was doing uh, Bob Lloyd's uh, workshop. And, and Bob... Um, uh, a friend of mine was out visiting me, and he was a disc jockey from yeah. the Midwest, and he came with me to the workshop. And Bob said at the end of the night, "Would you like to? Uh, would you like to take a, a crack at it?" And Mike said, uh, "Yeah, sure." Well, he was doing like a, a little ten-second spot that we had all done to death. There was no new way to do that mm -hmm. spot. It had been done among everybody in that workshop, doing two takes on it. We'd, we'd done it every way that it could possibly be done. So I thought, oh, geez, poor Mike. I mean, he's, he's, this is going to be really difficult. And he did two takes, and the first take was, was traditional. And the second take, he whispered. Now, it was inappropriate. It didn't, it didn't work with the copy at all. But it's like Bob Lloyd said, he found a way to make you listen. After hearing for the mm -hmm. last 15 minutes, all of you guys reading that spot, he found a way to make you go, what? You know, and, and, actually, and actually listen. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's, that's really true. Yeah. So you need to do that. You need to, you need to dig a little deeper. You need to get out of your comfort zone and into, into an area that... That's, that's a mm -hmm. great point. Yeah. yeah. That, that is a new experience for you, and it's amazing what you find when you go there. Oh, it's absolutely. It's amazing yeah. what you find. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this real quick, man. So, so when you're at home, let's say an, an audition comes in for a commercial or something like that. Obviously, it's got a little bit of uh, direction on mm -hmm. it as far as like mm -hmm. what they're looking for right. and stuff. How much attention do you pay to that? And do you overanalyze anything or are you like quick about it and just go or well, what's your process? I generally will, uh, I'll read it, I'll see what they what they give in the way of direction. Sometimes they will send like a link to uh, uh, a YouTube video or mm -hmm. something that will mm -hmm. be kind of a prototype of, of what it is that they're looking for. Uh, and I will listen to all of that. And, and there'll be times that I will think to myself, I don't think I can do this. I think they're looking for something that I just don't do. They're mm -hmm. looking for a character. They're looking for, they're looking for an actor. 
you know, and and uh, that's not who I am. And there'll be times that I will just call the agent and just say, hey, I'm not going to send you anything. I, I This is not right for me. Take this job and shove it. So to speak. Is that what yeah. you say? Yes, so to speak. <laughs> Sub, that's the subtext. <laughs> uh, Lose yeah. my email. <laughs> but but the, the other times, you know, you will, yeah, again, you, you'll just, I look at it. I listen, I read the direction, and then I do it as best I can in keeping with the direction. Now, usually they only want you to send one take. Mm -hmm. And so I will go for a second take knowing that they're only going to use one of the two. And I'll try something a little bit different on the second take. Right. But no, I tend to, I tend to follow my instincts a little bit more. And, 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 and as I say, my, my instincts could be a little rusty, yeah. you know? Uh, so it... it it's interesting how we were sp speaking earlier about the fact that the the, the, the sound of things has really changed yeah. over the years. Mm -hmm. yeah. The sound of trailers used to be, you know, the yeah. big with the, back in the fifties and sixties with the big graphics and everything yeah. sweeping yeah, yeah, across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know, the voice was the trailer. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. bigger than Texas. Yeah. You know, bigger yeah. than Alaska. Yeah, uh, you know that sort of thing. And they don't do that anymore. That no. just sounds silly now. Yeah. Unless right. they're doing, a unless parody. they're doing a spoof. Yeah, yeah if they're yeah, doing exactly. a satire. Exactly. Spoof. Now it's just uh, bigger than Texas. Rated R. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. it's just all kind of muted. It's and I, muted. I find it kind of hard to get to that place. Yeah. That's not a read for me. That they want just kind of that. It's almost kind. Of, it almost sounds kind of bored it, yeah. sometimes to yeah. me. It just doesn't. It just doesn't. Yeah. You know. I miss the old trailers, me too. man. Me too. The, the color, the, the color and the energy. And the yes, storytelling. I do yeah. too. What I hate about it today's, made you want to go see the movie. Yeah. Well, yeah. now they show you the movie yeah. in the trailer, yeah. and yeah. you go see the movie, and you're like, wait a minute, I that's saw all it. the parts. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I saw the best of the movie mm -hmm. when I have the trailer. It's yeah. insane. Yeah, it's okay. the abridged version of the movie with no with no words. That's right. Yeah. Um, or the, all the they'll tell you in the title of the movie what you know what Soul Survivor. You know, oh, yeah, well, it's like okay, oh, okay so we <laughs> yeah, have the one guy well, that's right. everybody yeah. else is gonna that's die. Right. You told Got me it. the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, that's You're right. just like, it's how like, long till everyone else is? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that is hysterical. Yeah, but it's it, it is interesting how that that sound has changed, and now what used to be kind of a nice polished professional sound mm -hmm. is now anathema. They don't want that at all. That's the last thing in the world they want to hear. Mm -hmm. They want to hear you dropping a G. At the end of words that end in ing, they want to hear. It, they want to hear it very casual, very informal, and and almost just kind of. They say conversational, but right. I don't yeah. think I've ever had a conversation yeah. that was quite that subdued. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I don't think mm -hmm. I. That's not the way. But that's what they're looking for. They're just looking for something that is just a little bit yeah. less. And yeah. I always want to give more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's my, because you're my a giver. Kind of he can't help it, people. He can't help it. You're awesome, dude. Oh my gosh. We gotta hang out with you all the time. We're taking him everywhere we go from now on. True story. Uh, there. True so story. so great. Mark, when you think about even through your radio days and to the present, what are some of the most memorable lessons that you've learned along the way that you think have helped you in your career? I really think and it, and it's gonna sound kind of trite and a little corny. I'm from Iowa. You know, what can I do? <laughs> this guy's a comedian. Yeah. Oh, that's but, great. but I really think having a perspective on life and on yourself that is grounded in reality. Mm -hmm. You know, don't go all Justin Bieber. You know, yep. just yeah. just having having a, a having a grasp of what is important in life. To me, and it's not going to be the same thing to everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it isn't. It, it's not going to be the same thing. But it's like I said, music. Uh, I I I love music. A music. A day without music for me is just kind of not worth going through. Mm -hmm. You know, I love music and I love it all. Yeah. I don't care yeah. if it's Luciano Pavarotti or if it's Willie Nelson. I don't care if it's Lady Gaga or if it's uh, you know Doris Day. I don't care. I what just, about I, Kiss? <laughs> Kiss? <laughs> yeah. like, oh, oh, we found it. <laughs> I don't know. You found the one group we yeah. Careful. <laughs> careful, we got the 80s metal representative over here. Be careful, Mark. <laughs> yeah, what about you Mahogany and Chuck Rush. might get in Mahogany, Mahogany Rush. Rush. Wow, whatever happened to Mahogany Rush. You were going Mahogany way Rush. back. Then. That was my first concert ever, by the way. Mahogany was it really? Rush. Were yeah. they Canadian? That was a Canadian band, I don't band, remember I think. anything. I think they were Canadian. Yeah, I, I, but it, that oh, was... Rush. No, I'm thinking of Rush. Yeah, you're thinking of Rush. Definitely Canadian, yeah. Mahogany Rush. This was Rush adjacent. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> so, but no, I, you know, I, I just think, I really think that as much as you can, and boy, sometimes it's hard, but as much as you can, you're just keeping your eyes on the prize, mm-hmm. knowing what really matters to you and doing your best to protect that and to and to keep that uh, uh, front and center in your life because there will always be distractions there will always be moments of stress and distress that take you out of that place but man you just got to get back there fast you really got to get back there as fast as you can Um, that really is kind of just the way I felt about things, I, I, I don't, you know, I, I guess probably when it comes to really awful things like death, mm-hmm. uh, I don't grieve the way some people do. Uh, I kind of am grateful for the time that I had to spend with that friend or that parent or that mm-hmm. sister mm-hmm. or whatever. Uh, I, I, I just think, I, I think that, I, I just think looking forward is is the best possible thing to do. I, I've, I've always cared more about my least favorite subject in school was history because I don't care. That's over. That's done. That mm-hmm. happened then. Mm-hmm. What's next? You know, what's what's next? What's what's now? What's mm-hmm. new? Mm-hmm. I, that's what I want to know. And that's what I want to experience. Yeah. And so that that kind of is, is the way that I've always without really until this very moment giving <laughs> given voice to it. Um, epiphany. See? <laughs> it's very good. Sure. Exactly. Um, it's but it, it, that that yeah. is the one thing that I find that I find to be most beneficial to me mm-hmm. in in the way that I feel about myself and how I'm living my life and how I'm conducting myself. Mm-hmm. You know, that's beautiful. That's, yeah. I well, that's that. it. Definitely. What, what is next for you? Like, yeah. what, what's what's still ahead for you that you want to accomplish or you know, experience or what's I don't know. still on your bucket list? I've got, I've got, uh, you know, I've got a lot of time since I'm not working as much as I once was. I've got a lot of time. I, I love going to the gym. I love, you know, hanging out with friends. I love all the things we were just talking yep. about a while ago. Yeah. I love all that stuff. In terms of what's going to occupy my time from this point forward? I don't know. I think I'd like to play a musical instrument. I've never I've never learned to play an instrument mm-hmm. and loving music as much as I do. I don't know how right? I missed that till I now. Know. Yeah. What is you know? wrong with you? Yeah. I think it's an, this I is think the time, baby. Yeah. Yeah, it is. You can learn with it some is. Kiss songs. They're very, very easy. <laughs> very easy to play. Very easy to play. Yeah. I even can play some Kiss chords. Yeah, no. I, can just <laughs> see, I can just see Mark now <laughs> buying a Marshall stack and a Les Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Elliott appearing at the Roxy. Just, you know. yeah. <laughs> we'll see you on the strip. You'll be playing. <laughs> with, a, with a little bowl in front of me. <laughs> you know, oh. so like, yeah. Anything. Anything would be appreciated. <laughs> anything, 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 anything. Please give me a dollar. A dollar. <laughs> yeah, One just, dollar. Yeah, it's not going to change your life. It might change mine. Oh, yeah. That's fantastic. There was, that. a, there was okay. a moment. Now we put Mark on the hot we seat and ask him an if, uh, question there? Yes. Uh-oh. Okay, Mark. You've seen the show. So give me a number between 5 and 129. Okay, uh, 75. 75, okay. 75. Good number. Um, 75. Very good number. 75, John. Okay. Hmm. Okay. If you could have been the producer of any single television show or series, which Are one you would kidding? you pick? Is that an actual question? <laughs> yes. That's so good. It's so perfect. <laughs> Ask him again. It even has a little. Here. Even has a little picture of a television. It does. It is. I'm telling you, this whole thing. It always people always get yeah, the right I, question. I love these books. Um, if you could have been the producer of any single television show or series, which one would you pick? And it's our show. You can pick more than one if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when you uh, have to pick one. I mean, the ones that the ones that obviously impacted the world the most were things like Roots. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 that was that was truly an amazing yeah, it series. Was. It that was. was just incredible. It was. And I really date myself when I make that reference. I know that, oh, it's but timeless. still, yeah, yeah, it it is it is uh, to this day one of the best things that I've ever seen. Mm. Um, in terms of in terms of comedies, and those are that is my programming of choice. I yeah. I, yeah. I I love sitcoms. I really do. I um, I think Veep. Is is yep. absolutely so wonderful. Good. I just think I think she's hysterical. I think every person in that cast mm-hmm. is amazing. I love Modern Family. You know, I Great love show. I love animation. I love Family Guy. I love American Dad. I love mm-hmm. Simpsons. I love you know. Uh, um, 
But no, I mean, just in terms of having been involved in something that was really, really important, yeah. really significant, mm -hmm. it would be Roots. Yeah. I, I think I think yeah. that would be the one wow. because that that started. I mean, that really well didn't start a conversation a, a, mm -hmm. about racial history and racial origins, but uh, it certainly it certainly brought it front and center it did. Uh, yeah. again it really, yeah. at a time that it really kind of needed to go yeah. there because the yeah. 60s were the 60s were were over and mm -hmm. there was kind of that lull where everybody sort of assumed that everything got better and mm -hmm. everything now is okay and uh, so we can just kind of go on our merry way and all of a sudden here's this this mini series that mm -hmm. says hey just so you don't forget you know yeah this is, and we this still is don't happened. need to forget Absolutely. yeah that's yeah. right um, um mark elliot Mark Elliott. <laughs> what fun this has been. This is just Mark been Elliott. Mark, Mark Elliott. Mark Elliott. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad you Mark weren't Elliott. I'm glad you weren't Clark Elliott, because that is hard I, to Clark, say. Clark, Clark Elliott. Elliott. Yeah, right? Clark Elliott. I don't even drink and I sound drunk. Clark <laughs> Elliott. Um, I, I I have to say, man, that uh, first of all, Stacy and I We have are been so, so looking forward to this. We have, this. Oh, you have We're no very, idea. Thank you guys. Thank to you. We are so have the opportunity to have you on our show. I know that Everybody out there watching the show is like, wow, we got to see a, a little piece of magical history yes. right here in front of you and, 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 and have you mm -hmm. talk to them and talk to us. Um, you were born on this earth to serve a purpose, and that purpose was to make people happy. Oh. And I'm wow. telling you Thank right you. now, man, you do that so well. Thank you, Chuck. That's Thank you. Very, that's Thank very you. kind. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Thank you so Stacey, much. It was Thank such you. a privilege. Thanks. It was great fun. You're always really welcome here. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank oh. you. Even if, even if we're not here, you can just come by, <laughs> hang out, take a nap out in the lobby or whatever. Just remember what, remember what happened the last time somebody said, yeah, yeah get in touch with me from time yeah. to time. You'll be seeing a lot. Oh, hi, uh, <laughs> uh, Mark. <laughs> not again. Uh, hey, we're going to see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Hi, everybody. I'm Mark Elliott, and I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy. And I would just like to remind you, I'm a guy that likes to talk. You should talk, too. Don't text now. Put the text, put it down, okay? Talk to me. Talk to me. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, what are you going to say? Spectacular. What a wise, wonderful, Unbelievable. Funny. Heart. Warming. Mark Elliott is amazing. Is an amazing, amazing guy. He really, really yeah. is. Um, gosh, what we are a so privilege. lucky. I'm so glad we could have him on our show, and now he's in our archives for us to enjoy for years and years. Absolutely. Hey, we hope you guys uh, enjoy watching our show. Uh, we, we definitely enjoy <laughs> making these things for you. We and, do. And uh, we're going to be back next week with another cool episode of Bo Buzz Weekly. So watch, watch, watch. Yes, and share, share, share on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And tell all your friends and friends you don't even have yet. Right? That's right. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have time, time for a little buzz. buzz.